Okay, equivalent fractions. This is lesson 103 if you're following Saxon. Here we go. Your objectives are to use pictures to show that two fractions are equivalent, and you want to find fractions that are equivalent to a given fraction. And again, this is something I think you kind of already know. We've already gone through this a little bit. So um, this is just going to be securing your knowledge. Okie dokie. Here's the new concept. Sort of. All right. Um, one half is the same as equals two fourths, is the same as three sixths, is the same as four eighths, is the same as five tenths. As you can see, it's all the same. Would you rather have five tenths of a pizza or one half of a pizza? Same difference. Same thing. Um, the main thing, and I know that I've gone over this before, is if you see that the numerator is exactly half of the denominator, well then, um, your answer is going to be half. Doesn't matter. It can be 50 over 100. It can be anything. So that's as far as halves go. And this is, we're just comparing to half right now. These are called equivalent, see the word e sort of equal right there, equivalent fractions. So which is more, five-tenths or two-fourths? And again, if we're talking pizza, would you rather have a half or three-sixths? The answer is, doesn't matter to me. <laughs> it's all the same. All right. Now, in example one, um, we have these rectangles, um, and here we have one, two, three equal parts, and we have shaded two of those three equal parts, two-thirds. Here, we have this same rectangle, but what I've done with a light color here is divided that in half, so now we see one, two, three, four of the one, two, three, four, five, six, four of the sixths. So we can see these two-thirds are exactly the same as these four-sixths. It's the same thing. I just put a little line through it. Okay? And so you can just see, watch this. Boom. Done. Okay? All right. So now in example two, what equivalent fractions are shown um, at the right here? So what we can see is here, let me turn, there we go. Okay, so we have our rectangle, and we have divided it into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and two of the eight are shaded. Here, we have a, we're going to say identical, even though it's my drawing, it's not exactly identical, but a similar um, rectangle, and instead of dividing it into eighths, it's divided into fourths. But you can see one, two, three, so it's one, two, three, four, and then it's just divided like that to make it into halves. So we see that I, I have colored in one of these four. We can see that two eighths and one fourth are equal. They are equivalent fractions. Okay, and then again, just to wow you, look, I've just turned it into eighths. So you can definitely see two eighths and one fourth are the same thing. Okay? It's like amazing. I'm like a magician or something. All right. So now let's go ahead and take a look at this. We're going to review the identity property of multiplication. So because that's the property that states that we can multiply any number by 1, and the answer is going to be whatever that number is. 10 times 1 is going to be 10. Remember, the identity property of multiplication. This is going to come in handy. We've already kind of gone over this, but I want you to see this again. Okay? So, um, when we multiply by 1, the answer equals the number that we multiplied. That means it stays the same. 2 times 1 is 2. 2,000 times 1 is 2,000. 1 half times 1 is 1 half. Lots of ways to write 1. 1 can be 2 over 2, 3 over 3, 4 over 4, 5 over 5, 6 over 6. <laughs> 100 million over 100 million. It works. <laughs> All right. So we're going to use that identity property of multiplication and the fractions equal to one property to name equivalent fractions. So if we multiply a fraction by a fraction name for one, don't let this confuse you, just follow. OK? 
okay? The product is an equivalent or equal fraction. So you can see with my handy dandy drawing, if I say one half times 2 over 2, remember 2 over 2 is another name for 1. So here's my giant 1. That's going to equal 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 fourths. We know that 1 half does definitely equal 2 fourths. We're saying 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Again, remember, we're just multiplying straight across, straight across, okay? So even though we're saying, in a sense, we're multiplying by 2, we're really not. We're multiplying by 2 over 2, which is the fractions equal to 1 property and the identity property of multiplication. Any number times 1 is going to equal itself. So this is 1 but it's 2 over 2, but it still equals 1. I love this stuff. It's like magic. Poof! Watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat. Well, you can't actually see that, but let's move on. All right, so now let's take a look at 1 half times 3 thirds, okay? And that's going to equal 3 sixths, okay? Would have been more helpful if I'd have done that. Okay, so now this, um, let me get this color right here. This 3 thirds is going to be that giant 1, because 3 thirds equals 1. So 1 times 3 is 3, 2 times 3 is 6. We see 1 half, and we see... One, two, three sixths. Same thing. Let me, uh, let's go that. Same thing. Okay, same deal. Okay, so now let's take a look at one half times four fourths. Again, it's the giant one. All right, because four over four does equal one. One times four is four. This is just equivalent, it's equal to. 2 times 4 is 8. 1 half equals 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 eighths. Yep, there we are. 1 half times 5 over 5. Same difference. I'm going to try to draw them. Eh, I'm just going to go like this. <laughs> it's too hard for me to draw that little special one. All right, so again, 5 over 5 equals 1. If I have 5 out of 5, that's the whole thing. But I'm going to multiply. 1 times 5 is 5. 2 times 5 is 10, 1 half, 5 tenths, equal or equivalent. Okay, same thing. You're dividing it, but it's kind of the same deal. Okay? So let's go ahead and go to example 3. It says, find four fractions equal to one-third by multiplying one-third by two-halves, three-thirds, four-fourths, and five-fifths. Remember, two-halves equals one, three-thirds equals one, four-fourths equals one, five-fifths equals one. So it's, a, it's the same as. Okay? That's why <laughs> it'll all work out. So let's take a little look here. One-third times two over two. One times two is two. 3 times 2 is 6. Okay, so 1 third and 2 sixths, same thing. Let's do 3 thirds. 1 times 3 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 1 third, 3 ninths, same thing. 4 fourths. 1 times 4 is 4. 3 times 4 is 12. 1 third and 4 twelfths, same thing. And now 5 fifths. 1 times 5 is 5. 3 times 5 is 15. 5 fifteenths and 1 third is the same thing. For those of you having some issues with this, I don't know if I'm going to be able to draw it well, but I will do my best. Okay, so we're going to divide it by 2. I now have 1 third is the same as 2 sixths. Here, let's see if I can do this. One third. And so I'm going to go like this. 
Okay, so here's one third. And this one, I'm going to divide it by three. So now I have three ninths. Same thing. Same thing. All right. Okay, now we're going to get into the part where my drawing abilities are taxed to their utmost. Okay, we'll pretend those are equal. So we have one third, and here we're going to divide into three, but now we're dividing it by the four. We're multiplying by four, but we're, okay, so we're doing this. Okay, this is just, yeah, not perfect, but you get the idea of four twelfths. Can you see that? You're just going to have to trust me on the 15th. That's not going to happen. Okay? <laughs> but you can practice that yourself. All right? All right. So now for lesson practice. Name the equivalent fractions shown. Okay. Let's do that. By the way, I really like these two colors together. All right. The blue and the black. Okay, whatever. Anyway. All right. So let's take a look at this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's six eighths, correct? And this is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, three fourths. Is that the same? Is that the same amount? And the answer is, uh-huh, sure is. Because if I were to do this, you would see one, two, three, four, five, six, it would be six eighths, same deal. Okay? All right, let's take a look at B. We have one, two, three, four, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's nine, and there's one, two, three of them colored in. Here, I have one, two, three. Let's divide. That's a bad looking three. Let's do this. Three. There we go. And I have one of them colored in. Is that the same? Is that equal? The answer is one, two, three. Out of nine? Yeah, same thing. Wow! Come on, you have got to be shouting for joy. This is just too good. Okay, so on this one, we're going to draw pictures, yay, to show that the following pairs of fractions are equivalent. So first, we're going to show two-fourths. So we're going to divide this into fourths, and we're going to divide this into half. So now, here's two of the fourths, and see how we can see that that's the exact same thing? Okay, now the next one, we are going to show 4 sixths equals 2 thirds. So the first thing I'm going to do is divide this into sixths and this one into thirds. If I color in 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, it's the same. Can you see that? <laughs> that's my alarm. Hold on. Okay, that's freaky. All right, and now let's take a look at the next one. Two-eighths equals one-fourth. All right, so we're going to divide this into fourths, and now we're going to divide it into eighths, and we're going to divide this one into fourths. And let me see how we want to do this. One, two, same deal. You see that if I were to go like this, I'd still have my two eighths. Okay? Alrighty. And now what we're going to do is take a look at this next part. Find four equivalent fractions for each fraction below by uh, multiplying each fraction by two halves, three thirds, four fourths, and five fifths. Okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Um, Okay, so one-fourth times two-halves, let me put my little equal signs here. Okay, one times two, do this with me, all right, is two, four times two is eight. On this one, one times three is three, four times three is twelve. One times four is four, 
4 times 4 is 16. 1 times 5 is 5. 4 times 5 is going to be 20. And those are equivalent fractions. Okay? Again, work this with me. Okay? Let's see how this works. 5 times 2 is 10. 6 times 2 is 12. So 5 sixths is 10 twelfths. 5 times 3 is 15. 6 times 3 is 18. Now those of you who can do this faster, go for it. But if you need me to walk you through it, that's what I'm here for. 5 times 4 is 20. 6 times 4 is 24. These are all equivalent fractions. 5 times 5 is 25. <laughs> 6 times 5 is 30. Some of you might want to draw these out. Feel free, okay? Feel free. All right. 2 times 2 is 4. 5 times 2 is 10. 2 times 3 is 6. 5 times 3 is 15. Uh, 2 times 4 is 8. 5 times 4 is 20. 2 times 5 is 10. 5 times 5 is 25. There we go. And last of all, let's go ahead and multiply these little puppies. 1 times 2 is 2. 10 times 2 is 20. 1 times 3 is 3. 10 times 3 is 30. 1 times 4 is 4. 10 times 4 is 40. 1 times 5 is 5. 10 times 5 is 50. Okay, so that's pretty much it. It's not that big a deal. Don't make it harder than it is, but take your time so that your brain processes the best way your brain works. And so now we're just going to do a real quick focus on concepts and use equivalent fractions to find common denominators. Okay, so for this, all we want to do here is um, we want the fractions to have the same denominator. So we can do this. 3 times 5 is 15. We're just we're multiplying the denominators. We multiply the denominators to find a common denominator. So now we have, if we're multiplying these denominators to get 15, now what we're going to do is if we're multiplying the 3 times 5 to get 15, we're going to go 3 times 5 is 15, and we're going to go 2 times 5 because we're going to multiply them both by 5. This, these thirds. We're multiplying two-thirds by five over five. We're going to multiply one-fifth times three over three, because three times five is fifteen. So we go two times five is ten, three times five is fifteen, one times three is three, five times three is fifteen, ten fifteenths plus three fifteenths is thirteen fifteenths. Now they have that common denominator of fifteen. This is a tricky one. Not hard, just tricky. But there's also another way. So you want to find the least common multiple. Okay, so sometimes you have to use a high multiple. But as you start getting into this a little bit more, you'll see that you want to try to use the least common multiple, the smallest multiple they have in common. So if we have 1 sixth and 3 fourths, we want the fraction to have the same denominator. That stays the same. So I know that both 6 and 4 have the multiple of 12 in common. If I were to multiply 6 times 4, that's 24. But that's a little high. I want the least common multiple, the very first multiple they have in common. I would count 6, 12, and I would count 4, 8, 12, and I go, oh, there we are. And a good way to do this is to go 4, 8, 12, 6, 12, and there it is. Okay? All right, so now I know that I'm going to multiply the 6 times 2, and I know I'm going to multiply the 4 times 3. So I'm going to do the 2 over 2, because I, I want the fraction to be equal. I don't want to change the, the amount that it's worth or that it represents, but I want to just change the numbers, but not what it represents. Okay? So 1 times 2 is going to be 2. 6 times 2 is 12. 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 3 is 12, 9 and, two, 9 and 2 is 11, 11 twelfths. 
So the two um, renamed fractions, 2 twelfths and 9 twelfths, now have the same denominator, and we then add them. If you need to draw this out, that's why we did all that stuff with drawing it out, showing you it's equal, it's equal, it's equal. Okay? All right. So let's see if we can apply this. Decide the best way to find a common denominator. We have 4 and we have 12. So in this one, I would just go 4, 8, 12, and there we are. So I can see that 12 is the best denominator. Okay? Do you see what I just did? I just counted 4, 8, 12. And this one already has a 12. So I have 3 fourths, and I'm going to multiply by 1, 2, 3. 3 over 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 3 is 12. And now I have 9 twelfths. The 3 fourths equals 9 twelfths. And I'm going to take away 5 twelfths. And I can actually get 4 twelfths. We're not going to worry about reducing right now. But do you see what I did? This was the L. C M, least common multiple. Now on this one, eh, two ways. Let me let me do uh, let me do this first. I can say uh, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, and I can say five, ten, fifteen. Okay, um, it doesn't really matter. On this one, um, the least common multiple and the um, finding the product by just going 5 times 3 is 15 is going to equal the same thing. Okay? So on this one, I would say 3 fifths times, and then 5 times 3, so 3 over 3, plus 1 third times 5 over 5. Let me get rid of this stuff over here. Okay? that out of there. All right, and so that's kind of how that would go there, and we would go ahead with 3 times 3 is 9, 5 times 3 is 15, and 1 times 5 is 5, 3 times 5 is 15, and now I have 9 plus 5 is 14 fifteenths. Take your time on this. Seriously, take your time. It all does kind of make sense, but again, sometimes your brain just goes, whoa! All right, so give your brain a little bit of time to get over the shock. You'll be fine. All right, this is fun stuff. You have to understand that when I have free time, I like to um, convert fractions and make equivalent fractions. I just think it's fun. All right, so now what's happening is you are putting together and pulling together all of your math skills, all your math reasoning skills, all your number sense, and now you're putting that into practice and making it work for you. This is really an amazing time. Give yourself a pat on the back and have a happy, happy, happy math day.